Hey Swaggeners, Marcus Brown here with MLC CAD, and I just wanted to take you through a quick presentation that I just recently did for the Kansas City User Group. We built a taper in SolidWorks. Let me show you how it went. To get started, we take a quick Google image search and find a picture of a Malaysian taper. Dropping that into the front plane, we are able to scale the tool based on the size of a standard Malaysian taper and start drawing curves. If you don't really know what you're doing, uh, the best thing you can do is just start drawing curves and kind of see where it goes from there. In this case, I did a style spline on top, a regular spline on the bottom. Then I started creating planes. I did a plane pattern so that I could create some elliptical uh, uh, cross sections for the various sections of the taper and then created a plane on the snout of the taper finished up all my sections and then did a loft we tried to sweep it first we found the loft to have better results in areas that needed a little bit of touching up we drafted or up in an additional loft contour simple right click add loft section we then chopped off the back it's really hard to terminate really nicely a loft like this in an organic part and so we chopped it off and added a filled surface which ended up being kind of a really ugly looking butt so instead of that, what we did is uh, uh, kind of cleaned it up with a, with a tangent connection and, and still we had some issues. In this example, I just kind of pushed back uh, a little bit further and cut some additional length off of the end of the taper. And that cleaned up a lot of that weird curvature that I had, making it more easy to, uh, to, to add uh, this, this filled surface. A curve did help a little bit, but this, this curve was just not enough to overcome this ridiculous uh, curvature that was created by modifying the, the end constraints on that loft. Um, this is one of the examples of things that we do during this presentation that you find out is that, uh, man, it's really easy to mess stuff up and uh, that kind of a thing. Uh, you know, there's a little workarounds that, that tend to help. So we did a tongue on the front, uh, did a freeform surface to kind of give the tongue a more organic shape, kind of give it that ridge in the middle. And then somebody pointed out that I put the tongue right in the middle of this taper's nose. So we moved it with the move copy body command back over to where its mouth was actually gonna be. And then we started dropping in curves, curves from the front, curves from the side, based on the picture. And when you project those curves together, you create a three-dimensional curve that looks like the side and the front together. That then was used to create two planes, one at each end, and then I created the leg, one on each side, and then and just to, for sake of time, I just mirrored the two over to the other side. And that's when we started looking at doing the shell. It's times like this where the shell or adding other weird things, uh, you start to really understand how much of a problem you've created with this ridiculous curvature on this taper body. So we go ahead and go in and, and move back this cut a little bit. Uh, it's a fairly common thing. Anytime you have an area on a part you really don't like, chop that thing off, fill it back in, tends to do a nice job. Maybe need to cut off a little more. I did an intersect command, create the volume in the inside, and I renamed all my body so I could keep track of them. But this allowed me to not only uh, measure the internal volume so I could figure out how much uh, I could fill this thing with, but also to uh, understand the uh, weight of a taper. It ended up being around 600 pounds of Delrin, and uh, that Delrin uh, turns out to be a pretty similar approximation to the actual weight of a, of a taper. We did a flow simulation study here. You can see it's going 10 miles per hour through uh, some, some water, underwater, just to check to see how much thrust a taper would have to perform or, or produce in order to move 10 miles an hour. And it turns out that the answer is a couple hundred, like 350 pounds. Uh, we can start to see the kind of the flow lines and the flow distribution across it, uh, pressure areas where you'll see a high pressure. These are the kinds of some of the things we did. You, you see, I also did a slot at the top and a cork on the bottom. I just felt like that would be fun to do to make a taper piggy bank. And then we applied my favorite appearance, which is an orange with a green iridescent, a diamond tread plate, turn the pink, turn the tongue pink, and uh, boy, we're ready to roll. We had an awful lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you have any questions, let me know and download the model in the comments.